What's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and we are bringing you the second edition of the Comprehensive Guide to Start Collecting Boxes. This one is updated in August of 2020, so um, a lot of changes have happened since the last time I did this video. Uh, we had points changes, new boxes, uh, changes in prices, so a whole bunch of things have shifted around. So I decided it was time to do another one of these videos and uh, take a look at what the values of Start Collecting Boxes are looking like now. So just to recap, the Start Collecting Boxes are multi-kit boxes. They offer a discounted price from the individual boxes that uh, would be inside of them. They're usually gonna include a battle line unit they also usually include a hero. Average savings is around 35%, and your average points in the box is usually around 500, although it does uh, vary quite dramatically, we will find. So, um, I'm gonna go through and grade each of these. Um, based on your monetary savings, uh, buying that box versus buying the individual kits. Uh, the total points in the box compared to the average um, of 500. The usefulness of the contents, um, that's generally looking at it from a competitive perspective. And an overall rating of all of those things combined. So, without further ado, here we go. Number one is Beasts of Chaos. We get 10 Bestigor, 10 Ungor or Ungor Raiders, a Saigor and Gorgon kit, and a Great Bray Shaman. Now, the Saigor slash Gorgon is really not that good. Um, it is one of the often complained about kits in Age of Sigmar that... It's overcosted and it is underwhelming. Savings on this box, 37%. So that's right around the average. I gave it a C. Points are, it range from 420 to 460, depending on how you build out the kits. Overall, um, I gave this one a grade of a D, particularly because, um, the Saigor Gorgon kit is really not that good. So uh, points was a D, overall is a D, savings is a C. If you like the Saigor Gorgon kit, then by all means, run at it. Um, but if that is not something you're planning on using, then you're actually better off buying the individual kits. Um, that would actually be cheaper that way. Up next, Demons of Corn. You get a Skull Cannon, which can also be built as a Blood Throne. Ten Blood Letters and three Blood Crushers. The Blood Crushers, Skull Cannon, Blood Throne, all not really competitive, so you're basically buying Blood Letters. Um, this is also a decent source of things for... Um, summoning for corn although you usually just want to summon the blood letters savings is only 28 percent so that gets an f uh our points value is between 450 and 460 which is pretty average that gets a c but i'm giving this an overall grade of an f just because of the lack of usefulness of the majority of the models and the lack of savings that you're getting here Demons of Nurgle, we get three Plague Drones, three Nurglings, ten Plague Bearers, and a Herald of Nurgle. The Nurglings are really not that good. Otherwise, everything in this kit is uh, really a staple of what you want to summon in Nurgle. So one of these boxes is pretty much an auto-buy if you're building a Nurgle army. Savings is 44%. That's a solid B. And the points come out to exactly 500, so exactly the average points value of these boxes. 
overall, I gave it a C because the Nurglings are not that good. But otherwise, this is um, a strong buy if you are building a Maggotkin of Nurgle army. Demons of Slanesh, you get an Exalted Chariot, 10 Demonettes, and 5 Seekers. The Exalted Chariot does not um, have a kit available for itself right now, so this is actually the only place that you can get it. All of the models in this are pretty strong. Um, however, the savings is only 30%, so this is getting a D on savings. Points, 400, also getting a D, so overall grade, I'm giving this one a D Although, again, if you're starting a uh, Slanesh army, this may be a good pickup of a couple of these, actually. Um, even though you know, you're still saving money and there's still a decent amount of points in the box. Uh, the demonettes are staples and uh, the chariots are also staples, so... It's really kind of uh, a catch-22 with this one. Um, it, the box on its face is not that good in terms of the value of what's in it, but the play value is pretty good. Demons of Zinch. I just wanted to make a note here that this box is no longer available. Uh, I don't know if we're getting a new Demons of Zinch box, but this one has been discontinued. All right, the Corn Bloodbound Goreblade Warband. This is the repackaged corn half of the original Age of Sigmar starter box. You get the Mighty Lord of Corn slash Corgus Cull, uh, a Blood Secretor, a Blood Stoker, a Corgarath, five Blood Warriors, and ten Blood Reavers. Um. All of these heroes are currently not available on their own, so you really have to buy this box to get them. Um, and therefore, I also had to kind of estimate on the prices on those. I tried to estimate kind of in the middle of where corn heroes tend to be. So estimated savings, 53% gets an A. Points, uh, 610 to... 650 also gets an A. This is probably the best one of the start collecting boxes that you have available to you. It is all staple stuff for a corn army. You get a bunch of things that you can't get anywhere else, and it's all good value. There's a lot in the box. So definitely one to pick up if you are starting a corn army. Right. Maggot Kin of Nurgle. So you get two Puscoil Blight Lords, which can also be built as a Lord of Afflictions, a Lord of Blights, and five Putrid Blight Kings. Now, the contents of this are a little bit controversial because some people don't really believe in the Puscoil Blight Lords. Personally, I do. I really like them. Um, Lord of Afflictions is also really good. Um, so, personally, in my personal opinion, this box is actually one that you want to buy, like, three of if you're starting a Maggotkin army. Uh, so you get four Puscoils and a Lord of Afflictions and 15 Blight Kings. You get a couple of extra Lords of Blights, but uh, those can be converted up into other heroes or into uh, just more Blight Kings. Your savings on this, pretty average at 38%. That gets a C. Points, 470, also getting a C. So overall, this gets a C, although personally, in my heart, it's an A. Skaven Pestilence. We get the Screaming Bell Plague Furnace Kit, the Warp Lightning Cannon Plague Claw Catapult Kit, and 20 Plague Monks. Savings, 35% or a C. And for points, ranges from 510 to 580, also getting a C on points. Overall, I give this a B just because of how strong the playability of this box is. This is really 
like you're probably going to buy multiples of this box for a lot of Skaven armies. Um, so the Plague Monks, very good. Screaming Bell, very good. Warp Lightning Cannon, very good. Plague Furnace also definitely has a place. So it is a possible multi-buy for Skaven players starting out their army. Slaves to Darkness. This is one of our new additions. You get... Oh, I did not change uh, what is in here. But you get 5 Chaos Knights, 10 Chaos Warriors, a and a uh, Chaos Lord on Karkadrak. I apologize for the error in this. Those are all new sculpts, which are not available anywhere else right now. So the savings is sort of unknown um, until those kits come out, since all of this is not available and doesn't really compare well to what already exists. Points, it comes out to 570, which is a solid B. So overall, I'm going to give this a B. All of this stuff is really playable that's in this. I think it's a really good box. Um particularly the sculpts are really awesome in this box if that's what you're going for and uh that lord on Karkadrak is really strong really good like him a lot moving on to grand alliance death we got the flesh eater quartz box which comes with 20 ghouls a zombie dragon terror geist kit three crypt horrors and crypt flares and all of this is like strong staple stuff for the army. Savings is only 31%, so that gets a D. But your points range from 530 to 710, which is a strong B. Um, this is definitely a multi-buy if you are building a... Uh, Flesh Eater Quartz Army, uh, I could honestly see buying up to four of these kits uh, just because the Zombie Dragons and Terror Geists are really strong and uh, you need a bunch of ghouls and the Crypt Horrors and Flares are also pretty strong. So you could basically build an army out of four of these boxes and it would be pretty solid, which is kind of cool. Malignance is our next one. This is sort of a holdover from before we get a whole bunch of new books. Uh, it doesn't actually fit necessarily into an army. Uh, so we get the Mortis Engine Coven Throne Kit, uh, five Hex Wraiths, which can also be built as Black Knights, and three Spirit Hosts. Not a lot that's awfully competitive in this. Savings is only 30%, so that gets an F. Your points... 420 to 550 that's getting a c it's pretty much in the average range uh overall though i'm giving this one an f it just is you know bad savings and a bunch of bad kits so i don't know what to do with this one this is one of the worst ones you can buy um and probably needs a refresh and update our next death is the Skeleton Horde box. Comes with also five Black Knights or Hex Wraiths. Um, the Mortark kit, which can build, be built as Archon, uh, Neferata, or... Uh, oh, who is the last guy? Uh, forgetting the last name. But anyway, he's the one that everybody plays anyway. Or no, Archon's the one that everybody plays. Uh, Manfred, maybe? I don't know. Um, and then 10 skeletons. Basically, everything in this box is pretty strong. Um, and the box is basically worth the Mortar kit on its own and comes with free skeletons and Black Knights. So if you're building a Legions of Nagash list, uh, this is going to be a pretty strong addition for a lot of people. Savings, 41%, a solid C. Points... Uh, 540 to 570, also getting a C. Overall score, giving this one a C. I think it's, uh, you know, possibly even maybe a B just because of how strong these choices are. Um, you're definitely going to buy one of these if you're building a Legions of Nagash army. Possibly more than one. 
Um, but definitely, almost definitely won. Moving on to Destruction, we've got Beast Claw Raiders. So that comes with a Stone Horn Thunder Tusk kit. And for Mourn Fang, that's all basically the essential parts of the Beast Claw side of Ogre Maw Tribes. Uh, savings is only 28%, so that gets an F. That's actually one of the lowest savings. Uh, points, 550 to 680, so it gets a B. Overall score, I give it a C, because it's, although the savings aren't that great, the uh, Stonehorn Thunder Tusk kit is essential, and those Mornfang are also pretty good. So, definitely... One of those boxes that's not saving you a ton of money, but has a lot of stuff that you want in it. Gloom Spike Gets. This is another one of our new boxes. Comes with a Loon Boss, three Rock Gut Trogoths, ten Cave Squigs, and two Squig Herders. Savings, 30%, getting an F on savings. Points, uh, 280 is what's in the box. Both of those are Fs overall. This is an F. This is, I think, actually the absolute worst box. Um, both in the value of uh, the savings, the number of points that you get, and the value of these things in a Gloom Spike Gets army. This is just a crappy box. I don't know what they were thinking on this one. Iron Jaws. You get a War Chanter, 10 Ard Boys, 3 Gore Gruntas. They're all staples. Uh, you generally only need one War Chanta, but you could probably go with two. Uh, I think this is a solid multi buy if you are building an Iron Jaws army. Uh, savings 35%, pretty average, gets a C. Points 570, jumping up into the B category. And overall, I give this one a B because it really has really strong contents and the points value is very good and your savings are still pretty decent. Moving on to order, we have another one of the new boxes. Anvil Guard, Black Ark Fleet Master, 10 Ar uh, Black Ark Corsairs, a Charybdis War Hydra kit, and a Scourge Runner or Drake Spawn Chariot kit. Savings, 39%. Pretty average, getting a C. Points, only 390, getting an F. Overall, I'm giving this box an F just because all of the contents are so terrible. This is just... I don't know why they made this box. I don't know why they made this box. Maybe they just had a lot of these kits hanging around and wanted to get them off the shelf. Uh, I don't know. I don't get it. It gets an F. Daughters of Cain, yet another one of our new boxes. Uh, got the Cauldron of Blood kit, which comes with a bunch of other hero options. It could also be built as the Bloodrack Shrine, and it comes with five Malusi. So, uh, you can see here that the possible builds are actually pretty complicated. The cauldron can either have a hag queen or a slaughter queen on it. And then you get the blood rack Medusa if you build it as the blood rack shrine. Uh, I believe you get the blood rack Medusa on there. And then you get the hag queen and slaughter queen separately also in your list. And you get an avatar of Cain. So there's a, a, a lot of versatility in this box. Uh, the Malusi currently are pretty bad. They're not really a staple in uh, your Daughters of Cain lists. However, with new things coming out, that certainly can change. Uh, current savings is only 30%, so I gave that a D. Points, uh, 670 to 690. That is a strong A. There is a lot in this box, even though it's actually only two kits. Um, so overall, I gave it a C, just kind of averaging out the scores. Um, you probably want one of these 
just because of the value that you get out of having that cauldron kit as well as the Malusai. Um, this is another one of those kits where, you know, the cost of the start collecting box is basically the same as the cauldron, so you might as well get some Malusai along with it. Uh, but uh, that cauldron blood shrine kit comes with an awful lot, even though it is one kit on the box it is basically your whole suite of heroes that you need for a daughters of cain army fire slayers up next you get a magma droth kit and 10 volkite berserkers uh the magma droth comes with your selection of rune son rune smiter and rune father uh so much like the daughters of cain kit this has like hidden heroes in it so you get some combination of those three heroes. One goes on the Magma Droth, two of them go on foot, and then you get your Vulkite Berserkers. Savings, 39%, getting a C. Points, 470 to 530, also getting a C. Overall, giving this one a C. Um, probably a solid pickup if you are building a Fire Slayer's army, although buying more than one of this might not be worthwhile but you probably want at least one graywater frastness uh yet another one of our new start collecting boxes you get a warden boarding king a codsmith 10 iron breakers or iron drakes and a gyrocopter or gyro bomber savings 33 percent getting a c points 340 to 390 getting a solid f now here's the trick with this the gyrocopter gyro bomber really not good not worthwhile cogsmith is actually pretty terrible because he the things he buffs are really bad so you're really buying this for a warden king and 10 iron breakers or iron drakes so overall i gave this one a d um uh, if you want the gyrocopter or gyro bomber, then I think it becomes a buy. Otherwise, this is probably a box you can skip. Ideneth Deepkin, uh, three Achillean Guard, ten Namarty Thralls, and a Soul Render. Um, savings is thirty one percent. I gave that a D. Points. 340 to 370 that gets an f overall score i'm giving this one an f uh just because of the general low value of what's in here um namarty thralls are not that great the soul render are not is not that great you're better off just buying a whole bunch of achillean guard on its own caradron overlords this one, this is the rags to riches story of all of the start collecting boxes. This was total trash in uh, the last video that I did, and now it is awesome. You get an Endrin Master, Thunderers, Endrin Riggers, and Sky Wardens, uh, and a Gun Hauler. Savings, 44%. That is a solid B. Points, only 450 so it gets a d but overall i'm giving this one a strong b this is probably a multi-buy kit for your current caradron overlords army everything in this box is good uh the engine master a little bit questionable but if you're running the iron sky command you probably want one of those in your list depending on how you're building it out um so yeah, I would say for a lot of Caradron players, pick up two of these. Seraphon, you get a Carnosaur kit, uh, which has multiple builds. 12 Saurus Guard, 8 Saurus Knights. Very little of this is actually competitive play. The Saurus Guard are seeing some play here and there now with the new book. Savings, 49%, getting a B. Points 400 to 420, getting a D just because of the limited use of what's in here and the points value. I have to give this one a D overall, not really that strong. However, Skinks, the other Seraphon box, 
You get a Skink Star Priest, 12 Skinks, 3 Pterodons or Ripperdactyl Riders, and a Bastilodon. Everything in this box is good. Your savings, 47%. That's a solid B. Points, 480 or 490, depending on how you build out those Ripperdactyls and Pterodons. That gets a C. And overall, I'm giving it a B. It might even go higher than that. Um, this is a possible multi-buy for uh, Seraphon players. Because uh, you always need more skinks. The uh, Bastilodon is really good. A lot of lists are running more than one. And the Pterodons and Ripperdactyls are also pretty good. So that is uh, a strong box overall. All right, Stormcast Eternals Thunderstrike Brotherhood. This is the yin to the yang of the corn one. This is the Stormcast side of the original starter box for Age of Sigmar. Comes with three Retributors, a Lord Relictor, Lord Castellan on Drakoth. I'm sorry, Lord Celestin on Drakoth. All the Stormcast have names that are way too similar, and they really need to do something about that. Uh, 10 Liberators, 3 Prosecutors, Savings 59%, getting an A, Points uh, 680 to 740, also an A. Overall, this gets an A for this box. It's one of the best values, although I do have to put the caveat on this that your Retributors are not a complete unit. Um, so your mileage may vary with that. You're probably going to need to find some retributors from an alternate source. Um, but overall, this is a really strong box. And for uh, someone that is just starting out in Stormcast Eternals, this might be one that you want to buy two of. Stormcast Vanguard, on the other hand, uh, not nearly as strong. You get a Lord Aquilor, three Vanguard Pelidors, five Vanguard Hunters, three Grift Hounds. Um, the Grift Hounds also only a half unit. Those come in units of six. Um, the Pelidors and the Hunters don't see a ton of play. Savings, 34%, so that's just about the average. Points, spot on average at 500. Overall, getting a C for this box, although the um, contents um, I would caution people on if you're just starting out. And our final box is the Sylvaneth. Comes with a Branch Witch, a Tree Lord, and 16 Dryads. Everything in here sees competitive play. Multiple branch witches may not be necessary. Uh, a lot of people do run multiple tree lords, though, so there is definitely some value in buying more than one of this box. Your savings, 33%, nice and average. Points, 360 to 480, just squeaking in above a D. So giving that one a C. Overall, a C for this box. Pretty strong, Um Probably a multi-buy for a lot of starting Sylvaneth players. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully this is useful to a lot of new players getting started out to see uh, what start collecting boxes are going to be of value to them. Uh, the last one of these was pretty popular. Uh, so hopefully uh, this one people also find useful. Uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon. 100% of our proceeds from Patreon go directly back into the channel, making improvements such as new equipment and uh, subscription services, etc. Software, things like that. So, uh, that is all for now, and I'll talk to you all later.